Hi, um, my name's Tara Linhart, and uh, I grew up coming to see bluegrass music at the Luckett Schoolhouse here. And uh, I grew up in Taylorstown, Virginia, which is very close to here, and probably about 10 minutes on a back road to get there. And uh, Luckett's was like going to the big city for me. It was the only thing that you could go to to go see music when I was growing up. So that sort of pulled me into bluegrass. Uh, when I first got my license, I would come here with my best friend, and we would we would say, "Oh, it's a weekend. We're going to go over to Luckett's to go see some bluegrass acts." And um, and now I, I teach bluegrass music, and I teach mandolin and guitar, and I play bluegrass. And uh, and it's always been great coming here because there's a sense of community, a sense of family, and a sense that everyone's sort of welcome. And that the building itself, it, which is behind me. It's this old schoolhouse from like 1912 with old wooden floors and wooden windows. And um, it's just, it's where this music was born. So it's also, it, I think it's part of this music is, is venues like this. So I decided I wanted to do an archiving of the people, some of the people that are still here that have been running this series. And so that is uh, what you see here today. Okay, so this is July 2012, and I'm here at the Luckett's Community Center with the, uh, the, the guys that have been running Luckett's Bluegrass Series for so many, so many years, thankfully, uh, keeping bluegrass alive here in, in the D.C., Virginia area. And uh, my name's Tara Linhart, and I'm trying to organize this archiving. And uh, here we go. So... Can you uh, tell the camera or tell us uh, your name and how long you've been involved with Luck at the Bluegrass Series? Well, my name is Lewis Story, and uh, I've actually been involved working either mostly with the sound, but over the years sometimes with, I did some MC work for years, but I started in 1980, and with the exception of one year there, uh, I've been doing it all, you know, from 1980 till the present, and uh, uh, well, for however many years it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's best to hear because then if people read, the, you know, hear this, you know, ten years yeah. from now, they can still figure out 1980. Yeah, yeah, since you told them what day it is. So right. That, yeah. Huh. But uh, I'm You're actually good. the second of the group of the bunch of us. I'm actually the second longest uh, person tenure. You know, Eleanor's mm -hmm. been here the longest, and I've been second. Okay. Um, how did you first get involved or interested with the Luckett's Bluegrass uh, Program? Well, the person at the time, it's been mentioned before earlier, uh, Gene Slaughter. Uh, I, I worked for Fairfax County in a print shop and he uh, worked for a company that would come out to different various places and service the machinery, like printing presses and stuff like that, and and uh, so I'd known him for some time long before I started here. Uh, he took over in '79, and uh, one of the times that he came out to where I worked, uh, he had mentioned something about coming. Uh, you know, if I want to be interested in coming out to help, and and. Uh, uh, I figured it'd be a fun thing to do. I mean, I love the music. So, uh, and since I knew him and, you know, we were pretty good friends and stuff, uh, I, I said, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I started coming out and uh, I was married at the time, but that, that didn't bother me any. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, would come out and leave her at home. And, uh, you know, I just started, uh, back then there, there was another you know, gentleman that did the MC work and, and uh, what was his name? Um, uh, he had a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was something like oh, that. What you call it? Ward Green was his name. Mm. Uh, he was the first one that I knew as far as did the MC work. Now the people that had it before Gene took over. When they started in 74, of course, that was a family band, and, and they had their own, one of the members of the family, the MC work then, from 74 to 79. Uh, well, Gene Slaughter took over in 79, and then I started in 80. 
So when it first started, there was some guy named uh, EJ. EJ band. Spence. EJ Spence. Spence yeah. His band and his family. Every week. Yeah, yeah. They and was then like they the just house band. Else to play. Yes, yes. And uh, they would get some name bands in. Uh, Charlie Moore, that was well known then at the time, and and different groups. It's been mentioned, but uh, uh, they turned it the uh, the business or whatever the work over to Mr. Slaughter in 79 and it was during that time that's when he asked me if I'd like to come out and help and, and I guess it was uh, like January of 80 or, or sometime after that that I started and uh, like I said with the exception of one year there I've been here ever since and uh, uh, so have you ever played music yourself or no no okay. I this is as close as I get. You know, I love the music. I I, I collect records, CDs. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm just into the music and uh, some so, other forms of music as well. But I know I never. I've always wanted to, but I never learned to play an instrument. Oh, or, never uh, too late to start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that brings us to our next question. What do you think is special or important about bluegrass music? I, I guess what what is it you like so much about for it? the most part it tells a lot, a lot of it tells stories of mm -hmm. uh, life itself you know how uh, well anything ranging from uh, good times or bad times or whatever like that but a lot of and a lot of songs are actually stories you know someone will come up with something an idea of something that's happened in their life or some you know they've gotten uh, uh, bits of wisdom from someone else, you know, and they make the songs out of it, you know, they, of course, the music, the instruments, you know, it's most of it, I like the acoustic, acoustic part of it, the, the uh, instruments, so, uh, and 99% of the time you can actually understand what's being said, yeah. and, uh, but uh, it's, uh, you have everything from your tragic songs to uh, humor songs and stuff like that, and and the beat, the music. I, I especially love old time music. Uh, I go to a place down when I'm not here. I go sometimes down to the Carter Family Festival, and and, uh, and they have a lot of people come out of the mountains and everywhere, uh, clogging, you know. And so you get a lot of these, and we have a lot of inst uh, musicians that have come here. Look, it's it also play down there. Larry Spark. I'm not Larry Spark, but Larry. Uh, well, yeah, Larry Sparks has and Melvin and, so and a bunch you, of music. Do you do any clogging? Oh uh, no, there again. That's something else I not wish I could yet. do. But not that takes. I mean, I watch. I watch a lot of it, but I don't like to get up there. If I can't do something, I'm not going to get up there and make. Uh, <laughs> no worries. No worries. But uh, it's it's a lot of fun, you know. And the music, just it's just the music itself. Uh, it just, uh, it, it, it's a feel-good kind of music for the most part, you know. You can't get that in some of the music of today. Yeah, like in bluegrass uh, music, we can have the happiest sounding song and kill anybody in it. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter how that's, gory the that's, death that's is. That's true. Stab and, them, And a lot of times them, the sadder the happy. better, you know. Yeah, you can get, yeah. If you can see tears coming out of somebody's eyes, the musician has done his job, you know, and right. and uh, <laughs> the, the ones where the dog dies is really oh, what gets yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just kill women, throw them in the river. Yeah. It's all well and good, but the dog dies. Everyone's like, oh no, not Shep. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, let's see. What has been the most rewarding moments or rewarding aspects of working here at Luckett's? Well, two things uh, mainly uh, is, uh, and that's one of the people that are here uh, these people are actually I claim them as family you know the people, the people that, 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 that I work, work with, with you know yeah. you, you come every every week for the amount of weeks that we run you know it's uh, uh, it's something I look forward to because it's almost like a family reunion every week mm -hmm. you know and you come and, and you're you, you along with whoever there's but you know since it's all volunteers you're all here for a purpose and that's mainly to put out put the music on for other people to come and listen to and and that's the other thing is that when the other people come and listen to uh, 
I, I'm a people person. I like to get in, you know get to know some of the ones that come, you know, and and make them feel good. Make them make them want to come back. Make them uh, uh, feel at home. You know, I mean, this is a good family place that you can bring your 90-year-old grandmother or six-year-old child or whatever. And uh, so that, to me, is, uh, it, you know, you get wrapped up in something. If you're going to volunteer for something, it better be something you enjoy doing. And uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and with these people here, you know, we've had such a long uh uh, tenure together or you know a thing like that together and we're all here for one purpose and and then when you come out and you uh, or you see the people that come out and see the shows if they've enjoyed themselves uh, not necessarily for the music itself but you know for the uh, way that they were treated or whatever like that and they come back then there again you you feel as though you've uh, accomplished what you're here for to begin mm -hmm. with and uh, so that, those two things, the, the people that I'm associated with and the people that come out each week and everything, uh, you know, that's why I do it. Plus the love of the music. I mean, that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, who's here? Who's there next week? Or who's, uh, who's going to be there, you know, uh, whenever? You got a new schedule out, you come, you know? And I say, well, most of the time I don't know. I, you know, I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to be here anyway. So if it's a good group or if it's a good band, you know, that's like icing on the cake, you know? Right. You're, you're with the people you uh, care to be around. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it's, it's a real sense of community. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even yeah, though I, think, I don't live in the community, right, most of these people do. A close lot of by. bluegrass music has a sense of community to it. Like, you know, you were saying in the stories you were saying about how people know the same families and the same, you know, yeah. father's got a bluegrass band and the son has a bluegrass band. Everyone's seen them yes, coming yeah. up. And those same musicians, a lot of the musicians, this is also one style of music to where that the musicians themselves will get out there and mingle with the people uh, that come to see them. You know, they appreciate people that come to see them. So they're, and you, there's not too many styles of music you see that where people take the time uh, to, for the people that come and pay their way. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I often point that one out too. Um, Okay, and what do you hope for, uh, to see for the future of, of Lucky Bluegrass? Um, well, it helps. I mean, even though we've been into it uh, for 30 some years now, whatever, uh, it would help. You're, you're, you're getting new people all the time. And of course, I would like to see it continue to flourish. And as long as the musicians love to come here and play, you know, if you get good sound people, uh, to make them sound good, you know. And uh, I would, you know, hopefully, hopefully that, uh, especially when we get back in this building here, uh, that you, uh, the people will come out to see the shows, they feel comfortable coming to see the shows. And, and I would hope that that would continue, you know, uh, as long as the music uh, is there for them to hear, you know, uh, this is one of the best venues I know of, uh, for people to come to, you know, and listen to, and, uh, you don't have too many places like that, you know. So, can you tell us what your name is and how long you've been involved with Luckett's Bluegrass Series? Eleanor Marshall. I've been here ever since it started, about 38 years of it. And how did you first get interested or involved with the Luckett's Bluegrass Program? Well, the guy that was doing the kitchen and E.J. Spencer, I knew both of them, and they asked me if I'd come and help in the kitchen. So E.J. Spencer asked you to start mm -hmm. working here? And Marsha Stry. What's Marcia, his name? Marsha Stry. Marsha Stry. Uh-huh. S-H-R-Y. He was the head of the kitchen then. Okay. And him and I grew up together. So did you like bluegrass? Oh, yes, indeed. So what is it you, you tend to like about bluegrass? What draws you to that music? I don't know, I just was always crazy about that music since a kid up, uh, because I was the only one in my family. And so the did, radio did, was a great thing to me. So did you like to dance to it, or did you mm -hmm. ever play music? Yeah, I have a guitar and everything. So you play guitar? Uh -huh, but I don't much anymore, I'm kind of my hand. 
got arthritis. Uh -huh. Like the mornings I wake up, I most sleep. Most most go sleep with my hand closed eye. Because the mornings I can't get it open. I can this but this one the mornings it's just like a boy. And it hurts me so bad when I open it up. Mm. It goes all the way up into my mm. So um what do you think is uh, special or important about bluegrass versus other kinds of music? I don't know. It sounds like a lot of it that can make it up as it go along. And they don't have the pep at the bluegrass. I like something. It's you like the peppy? Peppy. <laughs> I don't something like, you can dance to? I don't like the slow music. Mm -mm. No, so how I about go, when they do the slow songs? Is that when you just start going out and talk to somebody? Uh, when I go in the spirit to the movies on uh, third Friday night in the month, they play that old slow songs. I can't stand that. Oh, I don't like that. I you like, like them to kick to go fast? Yeah, I like something. Fast. You like to see how fast they can go? <laughs> you know me. <laughs> so uh, what's been uh, one of the most rewarding uh, moments or most rewarding aspects of working with Luckett's? It's for been, you? It's been very exciting. How? What? I guess doing one thing to another, meeting a lot of people. I've met a lot of good people. So that's one, probably one of your favorite things, mm -hmm. is just all the friends you've mm -hmm. made over the years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what do you hope for the future of Luck at Bluegrass? What do you hope to see? Some real good bands and things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to, you want to get your full kitchen back? Yes, indeed. I heard, I heard we got the stove. You know what they paid for? The new stove in the kitchen? How much? They have hung a dollar. $700? I heard it's got a lot of burners, and I heard it's got uh, two ovens. Oh, you could make all sorts of food in there, couldn't you? Uh-huh. I see, when I do the Cena dinner, I need more burners, because they cooking for kids, and I'm cooking for the Cena dinner. Uh-huh. Right. Sometimes when you ain't got no to do the third winds in the month, come down to the scene again. You don't have to be 55 old. We always glad somebody come in and they always just come in and bring a dish. And we put it on the table and all set them out. Maybe we could jam some, uh -huh. play out your guitar. Uh-huh. Eat and, oh, you could come and play and sing for us. <laughs> yeah. We would enjoy that. All right, well, is there anything else you'd like to add? That's all my questions. Mm, not as I know of. Okay, well, good job. Could you tell us what your name is and how long you've been involved with the Luggets Bluegrass series? My name is uh, Paul Gavin, and I've been um, involved in the Bluegrass series as a volunteer for 12 years, I think it 12 is. 12 years. Yeah, but I've come to almost all the shows since 1980 since 1980. Mm -hmm. So how did you first get involved in the Bluegrass series? Well, um, about 12 years ago, the, uh, prior to when I started, and let me start over again. I started in my involvement with the Bluegrass uh, series by um, being hired as a Loudoun County employee uh, to work to do nothing but uh, the custodial work at the bluegrass shows. That was after I had been, it was in 1980 after I, excuse me, that was 12 years ago after I had been coming to the shows for 1980. Prior to that time they would rotate in the uh, regular staff of the community center to come in on Saturday night, open the building, uh, close it up, clean it up a little bit when it was over, and you know handle any special building-related problems. And the regular employees were just getting tired of doing that, so they decided to hire somebody uh, just to do that on Saturday night. And, and uh, I said, well, you know, I come to the shows anyway, I might as well do that. Right, so you've been pretty much involved in some way since about 1980 then. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay, um, and what what interested you first in, in coming to the, the Luckett's Bluegrass? What was the thing that drew you to it? 
Well, I had been interested. I have not all, unlike a lot of people, I have didn't grow up on bluegrass. I was not interested in it as a younger person. Uh, Where did you grow up? That might have something to do with it. Well, I was raised in the Boston area, Revere, Mass. And oddly enough, there was some really good bluegrass yeah. around there in, in those days uh, at a place called the Hillbilly Ranch. Boston was a big Navy town in those days, and the Hillbilly Ranch catered to the sailors, many of, who, of whom were from the uh, South and did like bluegrass. And I had been in the Hillbilly Ranch, but I wasn't interested in the bluegrass when I was 20 years old or something, you know. So um, I first got interested in the music in the mid-70s. I, I worked for the uh, Navy at the Pentagon. And in the summertime, uh, they have um, concerts, like high school groups, college choral groups, bands, military bands, whatnot, somebody different each, uh, I don't know if it was every day, but it was at least weekly, would come in uh, for an hour at uh, the noon hour at the interior of the courtyard of the Pentagon where you could go eat your lunch, buy some, you know, buy your lunch up there and eat it. And uh, one day I was, um, the Navy band, uh, the Blue Navy bluegrass band Country Current was playing out there. It was when Bill Emerson, the great banjo player, first started that group. And it was in the early to mid 70s, I'm not sure what, but uh, uh, after I saw that show and I went to another show the very next night down in Washington, uh, somebody called the country gentlemen were there, whom I had no idea who they were, but I went down and saw that along with the uh, country current again, and from then on I was hooked on bluegrass. I started coming to the Luckett shows when we moved to Loudoun County from Fairfax in 1980. I had, uh, by then I was into reading, you know, where shows were and whatnot, and it wasn't too far from where we lived, the Luckett's here. And, I came to the shows almost every week after that. Hmm. So, um, what have been some of your most rewarding moments or most uh, rewarding aspects of being involved with the Lucky's Bluegrass series? I think the reason that I do it probably and the most rewarding uh, thing is uh, there's a lot of people that come to Lucky's to see bluegrass that are older they, you can tell, they don't have a lot of income. A lot of them are probably living on Social Security. You can come up here and see great music, bluegrass music, uh, for a modest price. And uh, it always gave me some pleasure to be able to provide that for that uh, population of people. Okay. Um, what would you hope to see for the future of bluegrass in markets? I'd like to see the, seri the series continue. Uh, that's my sole uh, goal. And, uh, and I realize that bluegrass uh, is changing from what it... Uh, has been in the past and uh, in a way that I'm not really crazy about. Some of the more modern stuff doesn't appeal to me, uh, but it's bluegrass, it's just a little different. And uh, I don't care what style of bluegrass gets played at Luckett's in the long run, uh, but I would like to, I'm committed to, to uh, having it continue as long as we have the use of the venue here. Anything about the, the, the venue that you find special? Anything about the building? Or? Everything about the venue and the building at Luckett's is special. You can go to uh, bluegrass festivals, outdoor festivals, 
most many of them have makeshift stages some of them have permanent little let me call them shanty like stages that they put up just to have uh, things in but there's nothing like seeing any kind of entertainment in a uh, theater sort of environment with a stage and a curtain and uh, and proper lighting and we have that at Luckett's and we have it in a historical building so uh, kind it, of like the the setting that the music was born in is this old small the setting theaters with wood floors and that's big right windows that's and, right that's right that's right and uh, of course after the uh, the only drawback that I have a noticed at Luckett's in addition to the hard seats <laughs> was uh, um, it was hard to uh, heat sometimes on cold nights in the winter time and hard to cool if you had a big crowd regardless of what the temperature was outside that problem is good will be solved now with the renovation. So it'll, right, so it'll, the, the first people were running it, it was, it was really hard to get any heat working in there. It was, yeah. that's right, it was hard to get any heat. They, they were portable, uh, portable oil-fired uh, heaters that sat on the floor, similar to those tubular things that they used to use at uh, football games and the professional games or something in the, in the cold weather. Yeah, I heard it could be pretty cold. So, can you tell us what is your, your full name and how long have you been involved in Luckett's Bluegrass Series? Uh, my full name is Paul Hauser Hope Jr. That's a mouthful. Um, I've been involved with Luckett's uh, 20 years. 16 doing the sound, and I worked in the kitchen in the 80s uh, with so Eleanor. So, when was your first year? Uh, 1986. Okay. Okay. And first year of sound was 19. 96. I took over for Jean. Okay. And how did you first get interested or involved in Luckett's Bluegrass program? Well, I played, I played music all my life. Um, I played um, rock and roll, played country, played country in the Dusty Rhodes Band from 1986 till 1994. And uh, Dusty was interested in bluegrass. And I told him, I said, well, you know, Luckett's has bluegrass. I don't really go out there much, but they have bluegrass. So, um, him and I would go out sometimes. And then Gene, Gene had known me from working in the kitchen and stuff, and he knew that I played music. And uh, that's when he had asked me, he said, you know, would you be interested in, uh, in taking over? He said, you know, I'm about ready to retire. I'm tired of, uh, of hauling the stuff and moving it. So that's and what Gene, what was Gene's whole name? Gene Slaughter. Slaughter. Yeah. He, Gene never, ever got the credit for what he did. Him and Barbara, um, I've often said, Barbara's his Barbara, wife. Barbara Slaughter is his wife. Uh, she and him, uh, they ran it after uh, taking over um, that they didn't have uh, anything to work with. Gene had his own equipment, his own stuff. He repaired his own stuff. They did everything, you know, with the heaters, thawing the pipes out and everything. And all it would have taken would have been one year of Barbara and Gene saying, you know something? I'm, I'm tired, let's just take a year off and we'll start back over. And if they would have done that, it probably would, probably would have never restarted, I don't think. When did they start? Um, I think they started in, I think, uh, let's see, uh, E.J. Spence, let me see. I think they might have started in taking over maybe in 75 or 76. And E.J. Spence did it before that? Yeah, he started it. E.J. Spence. Uh, Is he still around? Yeah, he's, he's still around. I don't, uh, I haven't seen him in a long, long time because he had his family, uh, his children had a band. So it was a place for his family to play. Right, they played every... Yeah, they were the house band. Do they, do they still live in this area? Uh, I think a couple of them might, but I think most of them have moved away. Yeah, to my, you know, best recollection, I think they moved away. Yeah. How about Gene? Yeah, I think he's still around here. Um, not in this immediate area, but I think he's still not, like in within you know 50 miles of here. You know, might be in uh, near uh, maybe Winchester or or down near um, Harrisonburg or something. Okay. Okay. So, um, do you play bluegrass also? No, I don't. 
don't play bluegrass. Although I have, a, you know, I have, you know, I have a couple Martin guitars. Up. I play bass, and my son plays too. So. Does your son play bluegrass? No, he plays. Uh, well, I give you a CD. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think um, has been special or important about the the series here and the bluegrass and Lopez? Uh, well, what has impressed me more than anything is we have a lot of bands that. It's amazing how many bands got their start here, actually started here. It might have been their first place that they played. And we've never told anybody. I booked bands for a couple of years, and Paul's booked it for the last 10 years. I don't think we've ever told anybody that you weren't good enough to play here. Um, you know what I'm saying? In other words, even if you wanted to open for somebody, whatever, nobody's ever, ever told anybody that. And I think you can have a bluegrass band or any band, and you might have somebody in a group of five people that, that are very talented people, and later they might break off and do something with somebody that's maybe more talented than the people they're with, and they always come back, you know? So it's it like, um, um, uh, you know, good people find each other. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a talented person, you find somebody. Even though if you have to leave the people that you're with that maybe not aren't as talented or as more or sincere, and I've always liked that. We've always been down home. Nobody, nobody is stuck up, and everybody's always treated like they're welcome. And basically, this schoolhouse, the way it's run is the way it was run from day one. We haven't changed anything. Not not one. So how thing. old is this schoolhouse? I think it was built in 1912, and. Um, um, I think uh, it was a, it was a high school, and it was a grade school. And now you have family that went here, My right? father went here. My mother went here. Um, um, my wife uh, went to school here. My sisters went. Uh, three of my sisters went to school here. Of course, they're in their 70s now, but they went to school here. I think Eleanor went to school here. I didn't go to school here, but. Um, oh, I didn't know Eleanor went to school here. I would have asked her about that. Yeah, and she went to school here. Actually, I think she graduated from here. Yeah, because it was. I think it was a high school back in. It was. I know it was a high school back in the twenties because I still have um, one of my aunts. I still have her graduation um, information to where it's actually a card uh, program with the card for graduating. There were six people in the graduating class, and uh, the school colors were green and white. Uh, the mascot was an owl, and the, the motto was "Live and Let Live." It was just live a and let live. That's live good and let for this live. area, yep, isn't it? Yep. Yep. It's amazing. It's it? very much the Taylorstown bucket sort of way. Yep, yep. Live and let live. Live and let live. All right. And what, what would you hope to see for the future of the Luckett's Bluegrass Series? Uh, I just Luckett's hope that we can can find somebody to pass it on to. Um, I'm 60, just turned 60, and I'm almost a youngster. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, gentleman, Mike Doyle, and his, and his wife Barbara, that have really helped out. And Mike's in his middle forties, but we need to, you know, you need to pass it on to younger people. And uh, it would be nice if um, we could find people uh, to pass it on to that it doesn't die with us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know yourself. You've been out here, and a lot of times the predominantly crowd is older people. Um, but we're trying to change that because there's actually, I'm surprised, there's a lot of very good musicians in Luckett's. I, I was, uh, uh, I went to one of the uh, things where they had the young, and they're very talented people. And if you can get them hooked up and get interested, not only are you going to find a bass player and a banjo player and a mandolin player, you might find somebody that likes to do sound and do the volunteer work. That That's one thing that is unique. We do... 400, I think it's 480 hours a year volunteer work. Wow. Um, and that's a lot. And that's, um, like my wife has said, my weekends are tied up from the first weekend in October to the last weekend in, in April. Um, I haven't really done anything else since 1996, I think, but, but do the sound on Saturday nights. And I do it because people expect it. They do appreciate it. And at the time, they didn't have anybody else to turn to. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it sounds easy, but even though it's bluegrass, sound is not, e not sound is not easy to do. Oh, bluegrass sound is not easy. No, and you know, I, like I said, I um, had played music, and I, I know what Everything's acoustic, so it can yeah, all feed back. Yeah. Right, and everybody's got an opinion. The, the, you'll find out it's like a baseball game. The room is full of engineers. 
<laughs> everybody knows what they want to hear. So I just hope we can pass it on to somebody else.